A broadcast storm is caused by an unusually high number of packets crossing an interface or VLAN in a short period of time. Now, broadcast storms are sometimes due to a faulty network interface card, which floods the network with packets or, as we saw earlier with the spanning tree lab, a loop in the network somewhere. In our lab here, we can see that user A has a faulty NIC card. I keep sending broadcast frames to the switch, causing a potential broadcast storm. If you're enjoying the content, please consider subscribing as 86% of viewers aren't currently subscribed. So, to protect against this, we can configure a threshold for incoming traffic on interface XE001.0 to limit the number of broadcasts multicast or unknown unicast traffic when a certain threshold is exceeded and this will be blocked until the incoming rate drops below the configured threshold. So we're going to have a look at storm control. Now if I just open up, um, all I need to do is just open up a singular switch. So if I open up the switch and we get into configuration mode, is it show forwarding options or something like that? Yeah, we can see that there's a default profile in regards to storm control. The only thing I don't like about storm, well, there's a couple of things, but one of the first things I don't like about storm control is when you look on the documentation, we see this. I presume that this is the same on QFX switches as well, but it says on the EX series switches, storm control is not enabled for multicast traffic by default. The factory default configuration enables storm control on all interfaces at 80% of the available bandwidth. Now, if we're looking on this switch, and let's just take any interface as an example, if I run a run show interface XE001, and let's match by the speed of the interface, we can see that the interface has 10 gig capacity. Now, if they're saying to me, by my calculation, if that's 80% of the available bandwidth, that means before storm control kicks in, it's gonna take eight gigabytes of traffic. Pretty pants if you ask me. So we're going to change the default storm control equation and, and create our own profile and then enable that and add that to the interface. So what I'm going to do is set forwarding options, storm control profiles, and we're going to name our profile, which I'm going to call, we're going to drop it at 10%, which is like one gig. So drop at one gig for all traffic. So that's for broadcast, unicast, and unknown unicast and multicast. We're going to say the bandwidth level is gonna be one with six zeros after it. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That should be correct. And then we're gonna apply that profile to the interface. Set interfaces, XE001.0, family ethernet switching, storm control. And we're gonna use this profile drop at one gig. Now, obviously we need to remember to take off the family INET because if we do a commit check, we'll see that this errors. Edit interfaces XE001.0 and delete family INET. Let's do a commit check on that. We didn't even do a commit chair, I just committed, but that's fine. Now, the way that we would actually check this, um, and unless we're running iPerf or some kind of Ixia traffic generator, not actually going to be able to see storm control crossing the interface. But if I did have one of those connected, I would run a run show interfaces XE001 extensive. And I would expect to see this changed or maybe this something like that but that's all i've got for you on storm control the configuration and um, there's not much verification that i can do so let's move on to the next lab it's question time question one 
What is the primary purpose of Juniper Storm Control in a network? A. To identify and block malicious traffic attempting to breach network security. B. To monitor and control broadcast, multicast, or unknown unicast traffic to prevent network storms. C. To optimize network routing by dynamically adjusting traffic paths. D. To prioritize voice and video traffic over other data types. The answer is B. Juniper Storm Control is designed to prevent network storms caused by excessive broadcast, multicast, or unknown unicast traffic. It monitors the traffic levels and takes actions such as dropping or rate limiting when a predefined threshold is exceeded. Question 2. How does Juniper Storm Control determine the threshold for excessive traffic? A. By analyzing the content of the network packets. B. Based on the physical location of the network devices. C. Through manual configuration by the network administrator. D. Automatically, using machine learning algorithms. The answer is C. The threshold for excessive traffic in Juniper Storm Control is typically set manually by the network administrator. This allows customization based on the specific characteristics and requirements of the network. Question 3. Which of the following can be a contributing factor to the occurrence of a broadcast storm in a network? A. Implementation of advanced encryption protocols on network devices. B. Frequent changes in IP addresses leading to routing table instability. C. Excessive prioritization of voice traffic over other data types. D. Malfunctioning or faulty NIC card generating excessive broadcast traffic. The answer is D. A faulty NIC card can lead to the generation of excessive broadcast traffic, contributing to the occurrence of a broadcast storm in the network. To get the complete question banks for all the JNCISENT videos, drop us an email at info at